Greetings, gardeners. Today's project is kimchi made in the Green Garden Guy's kitchen. Now, I, I grew up living with my German green grandparents. Um, and they used to eat sauerkraut all the time. And, well, I'm okay with sauerkraut. It's fine. But the first time I ever ate kimchi, I said, man, what's wrong with them German people? Anyway, <laughs> kimchi's got garlic in it. There's chili peppers in there, ginger. There's all this delicious stuff. But sauerkraut's got nothing but fermented cabbage and salt. So uh, I was turned on right away. And so I've been eating far more kimchi than sauerkraut uh, for the rest of my life. I will even put kimchi on a hot dog instead of sauerkraut. Anywho, uh, this morning I went out there in the garden and I got the main ingredient right here. That's Chinese cabbage. Um, this is the Rubicon variety from Johnny Selected Seeds. It is highly successful for me. I have beautiful Chinese cabbages this year. Um, I have tried several other varieties here in the past and failed. Even the University of Hawaii version didn't make it. But by fall planting Johnny's Rubicon, I got beautiful heads. I am very excited. And of course, my favorite way to use a Chinese cabbage is as kimchi. So uh, the primary ingredient right here. Now again, bear in mind, uh, this is Hawaii. And we do have trouble with slugs and rat lungworm here. I keep repeating this. And so I find cabbage to be an outstanding green vegetable for our environment because you can peel a cabbage down. And if slugs happen to have gotten in there, you can keep taking off outside leaves until you, uh, uh, you know, come up with a nice clean head. Plus, cabbage can be washed and scrubbed with a brush, which is all it really takes to clean up any slug slime that may have gotten onto it. Now, another main ingredient in kimchi is a green scallion. This right here is kobo. It's a Japanese green onion from the University of Hawaii that's perennial. It will keep sprouting and sprouting and sprouting and sprouting. I planted these once oh, over two years ago, and every time I go out there, I have green scallions. Love kobo. University of Hawaii has the seed for that. And also another vegetable will be ginger. Uh, ginger, I just pulled this one out of a container in the backyard. I like the container grow my ginger because it goes dormant in the winter and I can still find it <laughs> if I have it in containers, making it much easier for me to, to do. So first thing I'm gonna do over here is I'm going to take a bowl of water that has six cups of water into it and I'm going to add to that one half cup of rock sea salt. You don't have to use sea salt. You can use uh, kosher salt, uh, which is uniodized, or if you have any other form of uniodized table salt, it will work. Okay, I prefer sea salt. It's nice and natural. Using a non-metallic spoon, I'm going to agitate this a little bit here and see if I can get some of the salt to dissolve. Considering it's rock salt, it does take a while. If you have a finer granulated salt, this is easier to do. There we go. With a nice brine. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ginger and I'm going to chop it into slices. I don't want the pieces to be too big because if they are, people eating this are going to go, Whoa! That's ginger! And so we're going to make them fairly small. And again, the ginger was washed and peeled. In the case of ginger, slugs don't eat it much. It's mostly just a matter of getting all the dirt off of it. There we go. I've diced the ginger into pieces I think are small enough for me to tolerate. We have roughly about two or three tablespoons of it here. And that goes into the salt water brine. Next, I'm going to take my green onions. And I'm going to cut the root end off. Flip them over. 
tips off. There you go. Then I usually take green onions, fold them in half like that. And cross cut. There we go. And so that goes into the salt brine too. Okay, now I'm going to take this beautiful head of Napa cabbage and we're going to cut it in half from end to end. Oh, oh, is that gorgeous? And then I'm going to cut the butt end off here first. A little bit more. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, we'll get the stump off. We don't want that in here. All right, now I'm going to take this and cut it, oh, probably in about, there we go, about inch and a half pieces will do. And I'm going to split this one more time. There we go. That goes in here. Okay, Here we go. Now I have all of my ginger, about two or three tablespoons chopped, uh, three scallions chopped, and approximately a two pound, a little plus, two pound head of Chinese cabbage that was cut into chunks about like two inches right there. Okay, now in the bowl, we, again, we had one half cup of sea salt, and I started with six cups of water, but this recipe uses eight. But I didn't want to put the last two cups of water in here until I was sure all this was going to fit together in the bowl, and my salt was dissolved. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. Fits exactly right, because the next thing we're going to do here is I'm going to take a dinner plate that fits inside the bowl, put it over the top like that to seal the bowl, and I'm going to leave it out here again until tomorrow. So we're going to do, oh, probably somewhere around 18 to 24 hours of curing this in the salt water before we proceed. All right, so we'll get back to this tomorrow morning. Well, our cabbage is working over there, and we have a bit of waiting time. Uh, let's talk a bit about fermented vegetables. Um, uh, historically, fermenting vegetables, crocking them, uh, has been a method of preservation. Um, it, it was how you kept cabbage uh, many, many years ago as sauerkraut or kimchi. It was also, very commonly, how you kept the cucumber pickles. Now, there's been a lot of well, information, I guess. It's, uh, it, it's an up-and-coming thing in our culture that we have begun to understand how these naturally fermented foods are actually very beneficial to our system. Uh, they help culture the uh, stomach, the esophagus, and the colon, and so on with beneficial organisms. Uh, that's like you've probably heard people tell you if you had to take antibiotics, oh, eat yogurt. 
Well, it's because the acidophilus that's in the yogurt, the culture, uh, will colonize in your system. It's benign, it's friendly, and it will help get something going again after using antibiotics rather than having some random organism start to colonize inside of you that might not be very good. Well, fermented vegetables basically do the same thing. Uh, these are mostly working, uh, I believe it's on uh, uh, lactobacillus. In other words, it's acid-producing uh, bacteria, but there's also yeasts involved in this. It's, uh, it's fairly complex, and I think it really depends on where you're living as far as uh, what organisms will really get started. There'll be different strains and probably different combinations. Uh, a sourdough bread, for instance, that's how it's done. Natural yeast in the atmosphere. Now, of course, in the case of sourdough, we're cooking the bread dough, and so we're killing the organisms. And that's true anytime you happen to buy, say, sauerkraut that's in a can. Now, if you buy sauerkraut that's been refrigerated, there the culture is alive. If you buy kimchi, which is almost always refrigerated, the culture, again, in the kimchi is alive. When you buy crock pickles, okay, mm. It's a deli style pickle. The culture is alive, but you have to be buying them in a cold jar over the deli counter. The uh, canned pickles, canned sauerkraut, or anything that's been heated is dead, and you're not getting the benefit of those microbes. All right, it's very important. Um, the best way to go, though, is when you're working with indigenous microbes. And so if you're making your own pickles, if you're making your own sauerkraut, if you're making your own kimchi, then you're picking up organisms that actually live right in your environment. I mean, some of the microbes that probably get my kimchi started for me or these pickles started are actually on the, the, the pickle or on the cabbage itself living in the garden. This is how the original wine came about. The yeasts were actually on the grapes, and so they didn't add yeast to make original wine. Of course, France had better wines than the Romans did, and that's one reason the Romans took over France, is because in France, some of the yeasts were Cabernet yeasts on the grapes, or Bordeaux yeasts, or Champagne yeasts, okay? So these were really highly desirable yeasts that made much better wines than the sour, vinegary stuff the Romans had to deal with, because their organisms were not as good. Um, I found while making kimchi, for instance, that I can make kimchi in California in the Bay Area, and it comes out okay. But when I make kimchi here in Hawaii, the organisms that we catch here are actually superior. It makes a better tasting product. Um, so, you know, it's not going to be the same anywhere you're at. They're going to be a little bit different, but they all work. They're all good. All right. And the key to fermenting your vegetables is you have to use salt and or acids like vinegar uh, in the solution while you do the fermentation. The reason for that is that when you raise the salt content and you raise the acidity of the material, you're going to exclude all kinds of other things that could have gotten going in that fermentation. But when you got enough salt in there, like we used uh, eight cups of water to a half a cup of sea salt on this cabbage, there's very little of anything else except for the types of microbes that will make good kimchi that will survive that. In the case of these pickles right here, these pickles I used, uh, again, non-iodized sea salt in the solution and some vinegar. And man... They're really good. Okay. These are delicious. There's also uh, a bay leaf, some mustard seeds, uh, dill weed, a Hawaiian chili pepper, and a couple of cloves of garlic in there. The garlic's the secret ingredient. Very simple to make. In most cases, um, fermented vegetables are put out either overnight, in the case of the kimchi, to brine it, or in the case of these pickles, I did about three or four days here on the counters. Now, it's been cool, and so reactions were slow. And really, I just kind of judged it by looking in the jar. And when they looked about the right color as pickles, 
I put them in the refrigerator after that to slow everything down. They'll continue working for a while in the fridge, too. The, the, the microbe is not dead. It's alive. But the cold temperature slows it down to, to retard the process. Now, some people like their pickles really, really pickled and soft. And I do not. I prefer my pickles more crunchy. Um, so... In this case, what we have is if you buy Clausen's pickles in the jar from the store, we have something that's very much equivalent to Clausen's recipe. It's almost the same. Um, so there you have it, the short course on fermenting vegetables. Let's check the kimchi out. <laughs> well, here we are the morning after. <laughs> the kimchi's been working in the brine all night long. Uh, I'm about ready to put everything together here. Now, I have lined up a series of different items that I'm going to need for this step. Um, right here, in this measuring cup, I have uh, chili powder flakes, Korean chili powder, which is kind of special. And I haven't really found a substitute for that that's exact, although, if you can't find it or you don't want to use it, Sriracha, right here, which is a uh, um, sauce made from chilies and garlic, will substitute quite well. I've used this numerous times in making kimchi. You can also use your own pureed peppers and powdered peppers. The main thing that you want to make sure that is going in here is that you have red hot pepper, you have garlic, and you have um, a certain amount of sugar has to go in with this because it helps work the fermentation and adds to the flavor too. And so what I have in here is uh, organic natural Maui sugar, uh, some diced garlic, I have garlic powder, uh, I have chili pepper flakes, and I have the Korean chili powder in this cup ready to go. Over here I have fish sauce. Now fish sauce is optional and it depends. Some people find this objectionable. It's kind of like soy sauce made out of anchovies. That's what this is. Uh, it's classic uh, South Asian and well, generally speaking Asian uh, flavoring period. Um, I like it. It adds the uh, bass fiddle in the orchestra. That's kind of the way I've always described anytime you're working with anchovies or dried fish and things like that. It's an undertone that's in there that just kind of adds some depth to the whole thing. Um, now you don't have to use it. It's an optional ingredient and some of us use anywhere from one tablespoon all the way out to a quarter cup in a recipe like this, depending on how much you like the stuff. Uh, you will also need some nice clean canning jars with non-corrosive lids on them uh, because that's what we're going to pack all the kimchi into when we're done here. Uh, otherwise, our next step is we have to get the cabbage and vegetables out of the bowl and flush off all that salt that we put on. All right. Here we have the colander in the sink and I have my bowl full of cabbage and salt water. Pour this off there. Okay. Now, we're going to wash the cabbage. It was an awful lot of salt, a half cup, and so it would be intolerably salty if we didn't do this. Now, this colander is the only time in the process where I'm using any kind of steel tools in contact with this stuff. Uh, we're running the water through it and so things are being flushed at the moment and it's not going to sit in here for any time. But ideally you really don't want contact from metal uh, with any of these fermented vegetables and definitely do not ever ferment your vegetables in a metal container. Stainless steel, titanium, doesn't matter. Make sure the container is, oh, it can be, uh, oh, glass is best. Um, glazed ceramic like a crock works really well, uh, particularly if it was designed for use on food. Um, you can use food grade poly. Uh, pickles are traditionally made, or typically made in, uh, um, 
poly pails these days. All right, so let's see how we do here. Yeah, it's good. Well salted, but not too salty. Cabbage is wilted well from the salting. Okay, now pull up my sleeves. Make sure that my hands are nice and clean because we'll be using them in this process here. Uh, next, I'm going to put in oh, about a tablespoon or so of fish sauce. There we go. And I'm going to add my seasonings and the sugar. And then we just want to make sure that uh, all the dry ingredients are well spread through the cabbage. I don't want any big clumps of the stuff in here. It's beginning to dissolve in the moisture coming out of the cabbage. The salt uh, draws the water out of this cabbage and as it's packed into the jars, it's going to start to create a fluid around it. Okay, so now let me figure out how this is doing. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay. All set. Now, time to get it in the jars. There we go. I have packed the kimchi down tight into the jar. And I have poured the juice all over it. Now I'm just going to take it, put it under refrigeration, and allow this to work for a while. It's going to do some fermentation inside the fridge. If you really like your kimchi to be really strong and stinky, you leave it out for a few days. I am doing Hawaiian style. Hawaiian style is not nearly as fermented as Korean style is. Korean style is uh, pushed out about as far as sauerkraut. Hawaiian style is left only half fermented. So I'm going to take this, put it away in the fridge. When this is totally finished. This is what it looks like. It smells a little bit like sauerkraut. It's quite spicy. You can control how spicy this is by how much chili you add in, uh, how much ginger, how much garlic. All three of those things contribute to the spice that's in the kimchi. If you're a lightweight and you don't like kimchi to make it blow steam out of your ears, lighten up on the chili. Mm. Good though. Definitely my favorite way to use a Napa cabbage. Now the same exact recipe can be applied to cucumber slices. It can also be applied to daikon radish. Uh, it's very common that we'll see daikon kimchi. Uh, we'll see cucumber kimchi. Cucumber kimchi is actually one of my favorites. I, I enjoy that an awful lot. And so if you got extra cucumbers, you can try this. Darn tasty. It's healthy. It's aloha. Y'all hang loose. Or don't put too much chili pepper in the kimchi and be careful inhaling the dust because it'll make your nose burn. See you later.